Okay, in today's video, I am going to be go going over the motion of charged particles in electric fields. And we're going to be talking about particles that are moving along or parallel to the electric field in this video. In the next video, which you can link to in the upper right hand corner of this video, we'll go over charged particles that are moving across or perpendicular to the electric field. And in this video, we're going to talk about work, velocity, and acceleration. Before we get started, please don't forget, subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Please support my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Click on the subscribe button, click on the notification button, and get notifications for my channel also. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to first, we're going to talk about work. And what we're going to do is we have this positively charged plate. We have this negatively charged plate, and we have this positively charged particle, which is being held right here because it is, would be repelled by this positively charged plate. And what we're going to do is we're going to release that particle, and it is going to move down towards that negatively charged plate, because it will be moving along that electric field. Now, what we want to talk about is if I want to move that particle back to the positively charged plate, I would have to apply an external force. I would have to apply that external force over some distance. And when I apply a force over distance or when external force applies a force over distance, then you or that force is doing work. So we move that particle back to the positively charged plate where it doesn't want to be, then we have to do some work. Now we want to be able to calculate how much work we do. And typically when you get problems like this, you don't get the force times the distance because that would be too easy. You don't get the force and the distance because that would be too easy. You get the distance obviously, but then you oftentimes get some information about the electric field, the electric field strength, and the charge. So this is the definition of the electric field. The electric field strength is equal to the newtons of force per coulomb of charge. You can see we have a force here. We have a force here. We're going to solve this equation for the force. And then we get the force is equal to the charge times the electric field strength. Now I can substitute that value right in here. And I get that the amount of work you do when you move that charge through that distance, the amount of work you do is equal to the charge in coulombs times the electric field strength times the distance. And don't forget the distance has to be in meters. Okay, often be given in millimeters or centimeters. All right, so this is the equation we can use to calculate the amount of work that the external force does. Now, sometimes you won't be given that information. Maybe you'll be given something about the voltage and the distance or the spannung between the plates, the voltage between the plates, the potential difference. So what I'm going to do is also you can see you have here ED and here you have ED. I'm going to substitute this value in here, and this is the common equation you'll see. The amount of work that you do is equal to the charge times the potential difference through which that charge is moved. Okay, so I would say those are the two most common equations you're going to see for calculating the work. Now, I want to point out that if we were to release that particle again, it would fall down, fall back towards that negatively charged plate because there would be the force, the electric force. Okay, and then the electric force would be applying a force over that distance that's the same charge. So you could also ask, well, how much work does the electric field do, and it would be equal. Those two values are equal. When we move the charge up, we do some work. The external force does some work, and when we let it move back to the negative plate, then the work by the electric field, with the electric field is doing that work, and those two values, the magnitude of those two values is the same. Okay, so that's work. Now we can go on and talk about velocity. So we want to figure out now, if we have the part of that charged particle right here, we want to know what would its velocity be right before it reaches the negatively charged plate. So we want to find the velocity here. All right. Now, you remember we said that we did some work. This is how we calculate the work. When we did work, we also gave that charge some electric potential energy or some potential energy. And it's important to remember that when you raise something up like that through a gravitational field or when you move something like that, through an electric field, the amount of work you do is equal to the potential energy, or the potential energy that the charge would have would be equal to the amount of work that you did. Okay, now what happens when we release the particle? We've seen it falls or moves back towards the negative plate. That means it's losing potential energy. 
as the distance between the charge and the negative plate decreases, then it's going to have less potential energy because the distance is going to be less. Well, where did that potential energy go? That potential energy went into the motion of the particle as it speeds up, as it increases its velocity, so it's going to convert it into kinetic energy. So we have work, we have potential energy, and we let the particle move back to the negative plate, and then it has kinetic energy. So at the bottom here, at the negative plate, the amount of potential energy is equal to, excuse me, the amount of kinetic energy is going to be equal to the amount of potential energy it had here. So I just want to point out really quickly, please remember that the amount of work you do is equal to the potential energy you give the particle, and then we let the particle move, the amount of potential energy is going to be equal to the kinetic energy here at the bottom. Here it has potential and no kinetic. Here it has kinetic but no potential because the distance basically between the particle and the plate is zero. Now we can use this relationship, this conservation of energy relationship, to calculate the velocity because we know that the kinetic energy is one half mv squared. That's the same equation we use for mechanics. And we figured out here that the potential energy is equal to QED. I want to just take this equation and solve it for velocity. Okay, in order to do that, I have to do a couple of steps, but let me just show you the equation we get, and then I'll show you or go over the steps. The velocity is going to be equal to the square root of 2 times Q times E times D divided by the mass of that particle. Now, how did I do that? You can see I have to convert or I have to move all this other stuff to the other side, the half, the M, and the squared. So what I'm going to do first, what I did first was I multiplied by 2, and you get 2 QED that gets rid of the half. Divide by M, you divide by M, and then you take the square root, and you get that the velocity is equal to the square root of 2 QED divided by M. Now remember that we can also say the work is Q through, this, through the potential width that it's moved. So I can actually substitute that value in, and then we can get two different equations. These equations are the same equation for the velocity. It just depends what information are you given. Okay, so we have two equations, and we can use those two, those two equations to calculate the velocity at the bottom here, or really any place depending on the distance or the spinal through which it's moved. Okay, we did work, and now we did velocity, and now we're going to talk about the acceleration. Okay, the accelerator, it's moving through a homogeneous electric field. Don't forget the electric field goes from the positive plate to the negative plate, and it's going to be moving through that homogeneous electric field, so it's going to have a constant velocity, excuse me, not a constant velocity, an increasing velocity, and a constant acceleration. The acceleration we can calculate using Newton's second law, because we know there'll be some force, it has some mass, that particle, and we can calculate the acceleration using F equals MA. We can rearrange that equation. When that falls down, it's going to be accelerating. We get that the acceleration is equal to the force divided by the mass. Now, the force this time is the force from the electric field, which we can calculate using the same equation that the electric field strength is equal to the newtons of force divided by or per coulomb of charge. Rearrange and solve for the force again. We get QE. And then I can substitute that into my acceleration equation and I get that the acceleration is equal to the coulombs of charge times the electric field strength divided by the mass of the particle. Okay, so that's one equation. Now remember, we also said we have that the, uh, the, 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 the potential between the plates is equal to the electric field strength times the distance. So I can come up with my second equation by solving this equation for uh, the electric field strength and substituting that in here. And then I get that the acceleration is equal to Q. This is this Q. E, remember now, is equal to UD divided by M. And I can clean this up a little bit, and I can get that the acceleration is equal to Q, the coulombs of charge, times the potential difference to which it's moved, then the mass of the particle, and the actual distance, the physical distance between those two plates. So once again, we have two equations for the acceleration. We had two for work, two for velocity, and two for the acceleration, depending on what information you're given. Now, here we have all six equations. I just put them on the summary page. Basically, this equation and this equation are the same, this and this and this. It, once again, it depends on which information are you given. For example, here, you're given the charge and the charge, but are you given the potential difference? And here, you're given the electric field strength and the distance because U is equal to E times D. Okay? 
So that is how we can calculate the work, the velocity, and the acceleration. So this is the example problem that we're going to go through for this video. It says here we have an electron, so it's negatively charged. It moves by an external force at a constant velocity from a positively charged plate to a negatively charged plate. The electron is then released, and it moves back to the positive plate. The distance between the plates is 5 centimeters, and the electric field strength between the plates is 25 volts per meter. Okay, and we're going to answer the following four questions. I think I have four questions here. How much work must be done by the external force to move the uh, electron to the positive plate? Or, excuse me, from the positive to the negative. We want to calculate the acceleration. We want to calculate the velocity. And we want to calculate the time it takes for the electron to move when we release it. Uh, from the negative plate back to the positive plate. So we're going to do these each one at a time. It's just this, what we went through in the previous examples. Uh, the explanation that we went over, it says here, how much work must be done by the external force to move the electron from the positive plate to the negative plate. So you can see here's our electron, here's our positive plate. It would normally want to be stuck on that positive plate because they're attracting, because they have opposite charges. In order to move it away and to move it here, we're going to have to apply a force over distance. That's why we have this external force. And you'll remember the amount of work is equal to the force times the distance. We have our electric field uh, definition. We solve that for F, and we get QE, and we get that the work is equal to QED, the charge, the electric field strength, and the distance, and that is what we were given. And therefore, we can just say that the amount of work is equal to the charge on electron, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 Coulomb. This is 25,000 volts per meter. That's the electric field strength. And this is the distance in meters. Don't forget, you're given centimeters. You have to convert to meters. And you get that the amount of work that you would do in moving that electron would be 2.0 times 10 to the minus 16 joules. OK? Letter B. Now it says calculate the acceleration. Now we have the electron here at the negative plate. They're going to repel each other, so it's going to be accelerated through that homogeneous electric field. And we know that the force is equal to the mass times acceleration for Newton's second law. The acceleration is the force divided by the mass. And we have our kind of our definition for the electric field strength solved for F, the force, and we can substitute that in and we get the acceleration is equal to charge divided by the electric field strength divided by the mass of the electron, which it will give you, of course, but you could just look it up. And Q, the charge is the same and the electric field strength is the same and this time the mass of the electron or the mass of the electron is always 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms and if you do all of that then you get an acceleration of 4.4 times 10 to the 15 meters per second squared. Okay, constant acceleration through that homogeneous electric field and now we want to know the velocity. Now it's moving back from the force from the electric field and we want to know what the velocity is when it gets right here. Don't forget that we said they have potential energy when we move that charge through that field. We did work, we gave it potential energy and that's going to be equal to the kinetic energy uh, when right there at that positive plate. So we can set those two values equal to each other. Conservation of energy, one-half mv squared equals qed. Solve for the velocity as I showed you previously, and we can just plug those values in. Two times q, q is the charge. Volts per meter is the electric field strength, the distance, and this time we're going to divide by the mass. Do all that, take the square root, and you get that that is 2.1 times 10 to the 7 meters per second squared. Okay, letter D, the last thing it says here, the time it takes for the electron to move from the positive plate back to the negative plate. Okay, we want to move it from the positive plate back to the negative. This should obviously say from the negative plate back to the positive plate, because that's the direction it's going to be moving. And so I have this positive and negative backwards. And let's see, we're going to have the time. The time we're going to use our kinematic equations. And that says that the distance... Okay, delta x, delta y, the change in the distance, the change in position is equal to the initial velocity times the time plus one-half a, the acceleration, times the time squared. Now, we're going to assume when we have the particle here that it did not have any initial velocity, so that means this initial velocity is zero, and initial velocity is zero times t is also zero, so our equation reduces to delta x equals one-half a t squared. And we want to know the time, so we're going to do the same kind of thing we did basically when we solved for the velocity in the kinetic energy. We're going to multiply by 2, divide by a, take the square root, and we get the time is equal to the square root of 2ax, the distance through which it's moved, divided by the acceleration, 
plug those values in, and you get that the time it would take would be 4.77 times 10 to the minus 9 seconds. Okay, so there you go. Uh, we went through a lot. We went through the derivation of the equations for the work, the velocity, and the acceleration through taking a charge parallel to an electric field through that homogeneous electric field. And then we went through a nice straightforward example where we did all those things, calculated the work, the velocity, the acceleration, and also the time. So I hope you find the video helpful. If you did, please don't forget, leave me a comment. Give me a comment down there in the comment section. Thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. And then don't forget, sharing is caring. Share the video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.